Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you my EV settings for scenes such as this one. There's a lot of hidden things in here that a lot of people overlook. So we're going to get into those and I'm going to show you what I do for my scenes. Okay, so everything is turned off. Um, by default, they're not normally turned off, but we're just going to go into each individual one and I'm going to show you what I do in all of them. So first thing we're going to do, ambient occlusion. I leave it at default. In this scene, you really can't see what's going on in the ambient occlusion. And I leave... Whenever it is useful, I always leave the settings by default. I leave that to the people making it. It looks good how they have it. Now, everyone's favorite when we do sci-fi stuff, Bloom does a lot of cool stuff. Well, I mean, does one cool thing. But you can go in and play with the threshold. I leave that there. The one I usually mess with is intensity. So if you want to get crazy, you can do that. There's radius. I leave that where it's at. A lot of the default settings here for Bloom are good at the default. For this particular scene, I'm not using it, but depth of field, I have a video on getting good specific focus on objects and the same procedure works in Eevee. So there's a perfect crossover for that. So if you wanna see it, I have a video of that. I'll link it in the description. All right, subsurface scattering. There's no subsurf scattering in here. That's things you would use maybe for a leaf or a skin shader where there's light passing through the material. None of that is being used here, but when I have used it, I use I leave the settings on by default. They're pretty good where they're at. All right, very important one, screen space reflections. By default, half res trace is turned on. Turn that off. That's not, I don't know why that's on by default. I don't like it. So I'm gonna turn that off. Turn on your refraction. This is, these are glass shaders and there's no refraction going on. I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but by default, you still can't see through um, your glass in these shaders, but I'll show you how to fix that in a little bit. Put your trace precision at one. By default, it's down around here. Put it all the way to one. Sometimes you're gonna have some problems. Right up in here, when you render it, you're gonna see this smudgy black gradient, and what you would just sort of turn down the trace until that goes away. Not always, I had a loop where that was happening. I couldn't figure out until the trace precision, but keep your trace precision at one unless you have that problem. Max roughness, thickness, and all that, I leave it on by default. Turn on motion blur, I keep it where it's at, really good stuff. One of the problems I had with my loops is the first frame of the loop does not have motion blur and then the rest do, and it's a weird problem because it creates this flicker whenever it loops. So I'm hoping they fix that problem but for now, you can't do anything about it. But put your motion blur on if there's not if it's not a loop because it's really good. And very important, volumetric. We have some volumetrics going on in here. Very important is your tile size. By default, it's at eight. Looks pretty good unless you're doing it a still image. Then it looks really bad. Put it on four. It the, the smaller the number, the sharper the volume you're going to get. At two, it kind of overloads my computer at the render. So if you're doing stills and your computer can handle it, <clears throat> and your computer can handle it, I would I would put it on two, but I'm gonna leave it at four for my scenes because that's what my laptop can handle. I'm not gonna mess with hair. It's not in the scene, and I haven't really touched it. But there's some videos on that if you want to just look up something for specifically hair in Eevee. Shadows. I keep the cube size where it's at. Make sure you have high high bit depth and soft shadows. Um, soft, soft shadows is really important. The way Eevee does shadows is whenever there's a light casting on something, it makes a very hard shadow and it looks really crappy. So they finally implemented soft shadows. They're still not the best soft shadows. They kind of, they're very, very light, but they're better than the hard shadows in my opinion from what I've played with. And Eevee, you're not gonna get photo real, so you just deal with what they give you. Indirect lighting, that's done with your light probe. So say you wanna do a reflection cube map you would scale it past your scene and bake indirect lighting and bake cube map. And there's also the iridescence volumes as well. And then you can go in and play with that right here in these settings over here. I don't know much about them, but the more the, the higher the resolution, the longer it's gonna to take to bake, but obviously it's gonna look better. Okay, so the last one that we're gonna do is glass. So you can't see through it, it's just sort of like a reflective ball and that's a big problem. The thing you do is you go into your material. Right here I'm using the principled. So you would go down here, turn your transmission. I turn all my roughness down. But the most important part, scroll down a little bit 
and you go into the settings right here, screen space refraction. You turn that on and ta-da, you can see through it. I don't know why it's hidden down here. Um, there's definitely some reasons that I don't understand why they do it, but it's there, it's very important. So there it is. It took me a while to figure it out, but there it is. So yeah, there you go. That's my EV settings. If you have other things that I skipped that you wanted to know, either look them up or ask me. I may. I, I don't think I skipped anything. I covered all the things that are important in this particular scene, and this is a very general scene for EV-type things. So yeah, I hope you learned some stuff. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.